Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, Heavily Backyard Astronomy. Let me tell you, things have been wild around here, but coming up, I'm gonna show you how I set up my rig uh, in my Heavenly Backyard garden from start to finish. Uh, important steps on how to set up a rig. So if you wanna see that, I'm gonna have that coming up, but it's over here, there's the time. If you wanna skip ahead and, and uh, see what's going on with, uh, with that. However, bear with me. I want to tell you what's been going on here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. A lot of bad weather conditions. As a matter of fact, we've had two hurricanes affecting our area. Hurricane Debbie and then Hurricane Helene. Debbie produced a tremendous amount of rain across our region. And then Hurricane Helene produced tremendous amount of damaging winds. Now, I knew the winds are going to be coming in, so I decided it would be best uh, to my interest to take down my telescopes and, and bring the rigs uh, and put them into a safe place uh, to protect them from the damaging winds. There, you can see the video there of me taking in uh, the, uh, the, taking down the rigs and bringing in, them in um, uh, before the storm moved on into the area. <laughs> Those telescopes are heavy, you know that? Anyway, uh, the, the storm came through and we had winds here of 70 to 80 miles per hour. And just to my south by about a half mile, there was a reported wind gust up to 91 miles per hour. In the process, a lot of trees came down and the power went out. We were without power for two days here in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Areas just to my immediate west, they're still without power. It's been over five days now since the storm has passed on through. Anyway, uh, in the process of all this, I was generating weather videos on my other channel, my Pat's Weather and Nature page. And as a matter of fact, I put out 11 videos in 10 days uh, concerning the weather conditions there. And since then, I put out another weather video because we got another potential storm developing in the south, but I don't think it's going to be affecting us. So with that being said, you know, I was, I'm able to maybe start setting up a, my rigs. One silver lining behind all of this is that one of the trees that got blown down was affecting my view of the south southeastern sky. Now the tree blew down into my yard. I had to cut it back down. It was a 50 foot ficus tree and uh, I was able to cut it up and now I got a better view of the south southeastern sky because of Hurricane Helene. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, the threat of hurricanes is over for the moment. It's not the end of the hurricane season. We still have two more months to go here. But let's go outside and let me show you how I set up my rig. Now, before I set up the uh, tripod and the scope itself and setting up the rig, I like to build a platform into the ground. Nothing fancy, just some patio blocks, and I have them leveled in the ground, and that's where the tripod will stand. And uh, from there, uh, let's put the tripod down. Now, the tripod that comes with this, a lot of people are saying it's flimsy and all that. I'm saying, what I'm saying, it's light. Uh, let me look at that, it's, it's light weighted, and uh, it does the job, it does the job. And I just have it kind of like set, uh, I, I made some marks on the uh, patio blocks to where I will put it, and uh, it's pretty close to going to be polar aligned in this position here, but it's still got more work to do. Now, I could set the uh, mount directly on the tripod here like this. Let's, let me show you. Here's the mount itself, and it's not very large, it's not very heavy either, and it would just go into the... Uh, a system like this and you just simply lock it down right here and then lock it in with a, uh, uh, a secure bolt here uh, for uh, going through up through the tripod. Um, however, I noticed with my system I got a long extension on the back of the scope and it could hit the side of the scopes uh, of, the, of the legs. The scope could hit the side of the legs of the tripod. So what I did is I purchased the optional uh, 8 inch extender tube also purchased the optional counterweight. My rig weighs just above the uh, maximum weight for this system. Uh, it tracks very well but if it's all the way over uh, in the horizontal position it, it struggles uh, to try to get back up because of the weight. But with the uh, counterweight on here no problem whatsoever. Alright let's take this back off and oops gotta unlock it. Let's put on the extender that, if that's optional with this, uh, with this rig. And here it is right here. 
And you have a couple of uh, accessories. You could uh, keep it with the mount uh, accessory built right in, or you can uh, screw this out and put in another a smaller ring that will fit into the uh, EQR6 Pro mount, the Skywatcher mount. But I don't need that because I got this mount here. It just slips in there like so. And uh, I'll keep these openings on the side here. All right, and just lock it down and then put in the uh, device here, screw it in. This will help lock it down. I'm in the wrong side. This side up. This will lock it in. There we go. It's many, many turns, so it's securely locked. There we go. Now this is not going to go anywhere. And the next thing I want to do is put in the uh, tripod leg extender um, stabilizer. And just put those in there. Screws in like so. All right, so now everything is secure. Now, another thing I like to do with some of my cables, it has this little, well, it's got a bunch of dirt in there from the storm, but anyway, it's got this little holder here. I have a little 10 pound weight for my barbell system, and I just put that in there for extra security and stability there so this is pretty sturdy already and the scope of uh, the rig's not even on it yet all right the next thing before i put the mount and the rig on top of the tripod i want to make sure it's level and just take a standard level and check it in all three positions of the leg here is the uh, north leg here and spot on checking the uh, level on this leg over here towards the southwest spot on and this leg over here toward the southeast, spot on. So this, this uh, tripod is now level. And the reason you want a level tripod is it helps with the accuracy of the guiding. And uh, if it's unlevel, you get good guidance, guidance, but if it's level, you get better guidance. So let's go for the better, all right? Keep it level. All right, let's put the uh, mount on top here. Let me show you how this goes in. There's three set screws that come along with this extender. And there's no screwing or anything you have to do. You just set the uh, mount in here and then you can just lock it down. Let's do that. Obviously, the uh, counterweight bar is facing to the north. All right, just sets in like so. I want this parallel to this leg here which is on the north side. Of course, if you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the reverse, but yeah, you know, just lock it in like so. I like to do a little bit each side at a time, get it evenly. All right, this mount is not going anywhere. It's, it's fairly well stable already. So the next step, put the scope on. Okay, let's get the scope. All right, here's my scope itself, and I have it on risers, and I have it on this fairly heavy plate, and this is gonna weigh about 17 pounds total uh, with the uh, finder scope and the camera and everything on it. And it just slides into the, I think I got it set. Let's see here. All right, got most of the weight in the back. Of course, you got the lens right here. So I'm just kind of guessing at the center of balance, and I'm going to set it right about there and then we'll lock it in are we in yeah okay tighten it up it wouldn't have hurt my feelings if these knobs were a little bit bigger they're kind of hard to grasp with uh, the whole hand you have to use your thumb and uh, first two fingers to really turn it but uh, and I would imagine uh, when it's cold outside, which it really does get here, uh, it'll be even more difficult to screw these in. Now, with this rig, I have the finder scope up here. This 240 millimeter scope uh, uh, focal length, and it has the ZWO 174 camera. Uh, has the the, the uh, main camera is the Poseidon M, the monochrome camera, 
and it has a seven position filter wheel with the RGB, the Antlia RGB filters and the luminance filter. Then I also have the Antlia uh, hydrogen beta, the sulfur two and the oxygen three filters in here. So, so I'm good to go with the RGB or the Hubble palette if I want with the hydrogen alpha, the sulfur and the oxygen three. One other thing here is I do not use the ZWO ASI Air uh, computer. I use my own mini computer so I could use Nina. I'd rather use Nina uh, uh, because if, if, if you use the ASI Air, everything has to be ASI uh, or ZWO. And uh, my, my uh, um, focuser is the Pegasus, my power box is the Pegasus. Uh, so uh, the camera is not a ZWO camera, it's a uh, player one Poseidon camera. So I'd rather use the uh, Nina uh, with a mini computer. So the question is, how does this mount connect to Nina uh, versus ASI Air? Uh, obviously it connects to the ASI Air, but can you connect it to Nina? The answer is yes. So let's take a look. All right, the first thing you wanna do is go into your favorite browser and go to the ZWO site and uh, go into software and then in the software functions there you'll have different options here uh, to download the uh, camera drivers ASI studio uh, and the ASCOM driver and the firmware upgrade tool but all we need right now is the ASCOM driver I already have the drivers for the camera so you will want to download the ASCOM driver and just follow the instructions and after installation you can control the ASI camera the electronic autofocuser uh, filter wheel, AM5 and AM3 mounts and other devices through the ASCOM platform. Of course, you have to have the uh, ASCOM platform uh, downloaded first and set up on your system. All right, which I already have. Okay, so you do that. And then uh, once you go uh, into your system and, 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 and load it, you'll have an ASI mount um, application available. All right, the first thing you need to do is open up the application. If it's never been opened before, obviously if it's your first time, you need to open it up and you need to find out which port your uh, mount is on. In my case, it has an option of either port three, four, or five. And I just happen to know it's on COM5. You, you'll need to know that. I think it'll find it automatically, but if it doesn't, uh, you'll have to you know connect to the proper port and then you just say connect and it will it will connect there we go it's already connected and that's all it's to it now the first time you load it brand new you're going to have to check to make sure the firmware is up to date and the first time I tried this the firmware was not up to date and it loaded in the firmware and everything was just fine after that uh, you can set the rate on your um, uh, guiding speed and not guiding speed but your slewing speed uh, for manual slewing and you can slew with these uh, devices over here. It also has a hand control outside if you want to use it. I don't like using it. Um, I'd rather use it uh, either through here or uh, most times I just use it through Nina. All right. So the next thing I do is go into Nina. And in Nina, I have uh, my camera with my Poseidon, uh, which is not ZWO. The filter wheel is an electronic filter wheel. Uh, the focuser is a Pegasus focus cube. Uh, I don't have a rotator. The mount is going to be the ASI mount. You'll have different options in here depending on the different uh, software that you uh, uh, loaded into your system. Uh, also, I have the EQ mod for the uh, EQ6R Pro mount that I use. But what I want is the ASI mount. So I'll select that, which is already selected. Okay. And then for the guider, I use PHD2. And the switch is the Pegasus. Uh, power box advanced switch. All right, so from there, I just like to go back up to the camera and go down to here and say connect all devices. Okay, and it'll connect. There's the camera, there's the filter wheel, there's the telescope, and see the ASI mount uh, ASCOM server came up automatically. And it's also the same thing for PhD2. Uh, you will, I have to stop it here. Uh, there's the North Star. Um, over here, uh, you, you want your ASI mount ASCOM. That's all you, you really need to know. Okay, and just hook it in, of course, via uh, USB connection on the uh, port itself. All right, we're ready to go. So with that being said, 
let's do some imaging. All right, I'm slewing to the target right now, which is M31 or the Andromeda Galaxy. Let's see what it looks like. There's the first attempt. There's the second one, and uh, less than a minute of arc off. Not bad. Okay, that's a one minute. Let's take a look. No guiding. Looks pretty good. Let's go with two minutes. All right, coming up on a two minute view with no guiding. See what happens here. I got a couple clouds passing through, but let's zoom in on this. Still looks pretty good. I mean, that's two minutes, no guiding at all. All right, let's try five. Let's just push it here, 300 seconds. All right, five minute image coming in with no guiding. Let's see what it looks like. Again, a few clouds. But look how round those stars are. Wow. Right, let's turn the guider on. All right, here's a five minute exposure coming in with guiding. And the guiding uh, was at 0.64 um, arc seconds of error. So let's zoom in. Uh, other than being slightly out of focus, uh, the stars are perfectly round. Perfectly round. Wow. Okay. And the sky is cloudy right now, but you know, I, I know a meteorologist that is pretty good at forecasting the sky. And it's going to be clear tonight, at least after 10 o'clock tonight. And the Andromeda Galaxy will be rising right over there and then shooting high over north, uh, high overhead to the north and then back in the northwest. Uh, and I should be able to get it for at least seven hours uh, throughout the nighttime hours. So at the end of the video, which is coming up, I'll have the picture, final picture of the Andromeda Galaxy, hopefully. And uh, I'd like to thank all my supporters who have helped me keep this channel going. And uh, uh, you can see their names coming up over here. And also, uh, if you would like to support my channel and join the list, please do. I have the link below on how to uh, support my channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. And you know, I love astronomy. And uh, you know, the heavens, when the sky is clear, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders. And they're all in a sky near you. And even in your own backyard. So with that being said, unless you need rain, and I don't need any rain right now, unless you need rain, clear skies everyone.